What's up guys? So today we are going to take a look into pods. How to use a init container in order to initialize a certain uh, pod. We are going to see a little bit about uh, app containers, which is going to be once it is initialized. We are going to see the logs, the scribe, and we are going to see the command QCTL explain a little bit in order to see some of the different um, resources that you have out there. Besides that, we are going to see a little bit of the the main reference of the documentation that I'm going to be taking a look from Kubernetes and let's go for it. So a pod is the smallest unit that a Kubernetes can actually handle, right? Behind the scenes, a pod is going to have uh, different containers, and some of these different containers, they are going to do the activities that you're looking for, right? The last, the last time that we talk, we were talking, taking a look into an XJS Docker container, and in this particular case, what we are going to grab is we're going to take this Docker container, and we're going to put it inside of the pod, and besides that, we are going to try to initialize, and we're going to make it different two different concepts here. One is going to be the initialization of the content, the initialization, the initialization of the pod, and the second one is going to be the the app running, right? The app container up and running. So something that's very important when you take a look into these kind of things is going to be what's going on with the pod itself in each moment, right? And for doing so, I highly recommend that you take a look into the lifecycle. This is going to explain you a little bit of what's going on with, the, with everything in regards to this container and everything that's going on with this uh, pod, right? So the most common ones is going to be pending, run, running to see failure and unknown. Uh, we're going to see basically um, when it's going to be running and, and that's going to be the most common one because it's going to be running the Next.js application there. And we're going to have two different, two different containers. One is going to be the initialization of the container and the second one is going to be the app container running, right? So in this particular case, we're going to see the Initialization of the container, right? So let's go for it. Um, init container, understanding the init containers, okay. And we can see here a, bit, a very small example in regards to the pod. So here we are. We have the distributed systems, which is going to be the repo that we're going to be using for this particular case. And we have a dockerized Next.js that we did the last, uh, the last time, right? What we're going to do right now is going to be just grabbing this docker asset next.js and we are going to we're going to place everything else here into this one. So let's see. Um docker asset next.js And we have everything copied. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we have Minikube up and running. So we're going to see the images. We're going to we're going to build this image. Christ in XJS, for example, we're going to tag it with that name. XJS. And um, yeah, let's go for it. Minus T. Um, to use production. So do you remember that this is. I make a mistake here, it's going to be the aggressive minus target production. So, you remember that we actually make different multi stages for this one. So, in this particular case, we are going to create a build of the Docker asset Next.js in the target of production. Okay. 
Okay, so we finished the build of this guy. Let's see the images. We have here the image. So now I'm going to say um, I'm going to run it just to test it out. And looks like that's up and running. I need to expose the port. In the speed 3000, 3000. Not to forget the port. Not to forget that first comes the definition of the option. And then it goes the port. And then it goes the image, right? Let's try it again. There we are. We have the users that goes here. Okay, pretty nice. Everything's up and running. So now we want to we want to see this inside of the pod. And in order to so we are going to take a look into this a small example that we have here. And then we're going to create create here uh, we're going to create we're going to create here a little file with the um, pod definition for the YAML. We're going to call it right. So we have here a little example in regards to in regards to what we need, which is completely the installation of a certain pod with the with the container, right? We can see here that this guy is saying that it's going to be looping using the operation of dig into a certain service, and it's going to sleep. It's going to sleep one second each time, so for 100 seconds, it's going to try it out to see if the service is getting back properly, right? And if it goes alright, then it finishes with zero meaning that everything went okay otherwise it will go out with a one and that's going to say okay i could not initialize initialize my, my my container so this is going to help us to start the application container with a resource that's going to be already available for us right we're going to write the following uh, just i'm going to write a little bit the definition that's fine there uh, so I like to write it because this way <laughs> I can actually remember it a bit more. So we can see that the spec should be one before. Like this. So comes this, the metadata and then comes the spec. Um, we can see also if you have any doubt in regards to these kind of things. I mean, the definition of a certain pod you can always do explain. So QCT explain will give you the different information in regards to the pod that you can you can run with even further information here, right? So this is very convenient command. Let's go for a QCDL apply minus f of the pod.yaml. We can see that instead of labels, should be labels. Apply it again. And now we have a pod. And it's creating the container. And there was an error with the image pool of course so what we need is could be image pool policy so you can have a certain policy that's going to define if you want to download if you want to download a certain pod from the cloud or not in this particular case I want to use my um, the, the image that comes into my into my own my own system not the one that comes from the cloud right so what we need is the following the pod yaml is going to have here the name and then it's going to say image pool policy never in this case i don't need it and the image is going to be this one let's try to apply it again
inside of the Docker environment, right? So now if I run Docker images, you will see a lot more images there. And now we can we can build this image one more time for production, but this is going to be running inside of the um, inside of the images that are under control of the of the mini cube, right? With all the information that comes with Kubernetes and so on and so forth. Awesome. So now that we have this image here, see it here. We can um, now we can actually run the QCD apply minus f of the pod YAML, and we can see that the pod is up and running. So we can, for example, say uh, logs of the pod, and it's going to show you that is everything up and running in this port. So um, that's great. And now the next step will be okay. How do you access to this pod, for example? Um, you can say exec minus it of the next pod minus minus sh and now you're inside of this container that is is, is inside of the pod um, we can say ps and we can see that this is running the next start which is doing the the thing that we see here in the logs that's pretty cool so that's up and running of a of a um, of the container core we have core now i would say apica add core so this is the command for for Alpine Linux to get the core, and I would say localhost 3000, and we can see that we get a lot of information here of the web page that we're looking for, right? So it is up and running. Next step will be the following: we see the one of the the status that we care about. This is going to be the, start, the the running of this of this pod, one of the life cycles there, right? Del delete pod next pod. Here to we're going to clean it up. We can see that one of the differences in regards to pods and deployments is that the pod is not going to be rescaled because there is no deployment behind the scenes that. Uh, that comes with a certain scaling there. That's going to say, okay, I'm going to scale up this pod again, right? So there are no more, no more pods there. We need to, we need to try it out the init port. So in order to start the init pod, we can say instead of containers because this is the what we call the app container. init container containers and here we can say init example to Something simple with this. Try it out. That's not a good sign, let's see. Describe next pod. Say describe the next pod, how it's working.
not finding this guy. Move this. That's the one. So we need to change a bit the definition that we are using here. Of this, we can do it like this. Spear get pod. Next pod. We did it first. We apply again. Initializing and running. You see, it actually make the initialization first and then you get it running. That's perfectly fine. So you see that there are two different steps. One is going to be the initialization of the certain container and then it's going to be the running of the container. And that's pretty nice because um, there are a lot of times that you're going to be looking for having a certain database up and running there. That's going to give you all the resources that you need or anything that you want there. Any kind of service that's going to provide some certain information for you to start your container up and up, up, up and running in the way that you expect. Taking a look into some of the basic commands that we saw today was qctl get pod in order to know all the different pods that are running there, qctl uh, describe pod, which will give you when you don't have a certain pod um, up and running, you can describe and see maybe a little bit of what's going on there. Uh, so we can see that here there is the creation of the, the BC box that's going to be working with the initialization of this example, right? This init example, and then it's going to be creating, it's going to grab the container next, the crisis next JS, um, and afterwards it's going to run it, right? So, and then we can say uh, logs of the next pod. And that's going to give you the server that's up and running in this local host of the 3000. So, yeah, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Also, we saw a little bit of the QCDL explained, so that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video of today. Uh, if you did so, just click the like and subscribe to the channel. Next time, we're going to take a look into what's going to be the pod resources. So, have a good one. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.